Hello, friends. I hope you're having a great day. Cindy and I are having a really good day. I talked her into going outside here today. Um, <laughs> it's just something about feel like we're just a little bit closer to Jesus. Of course, we have some elements outside. We have a few little bugs out here and wind. We might have a train or plane or something like that. So just forgive those little things. So we hope you feel at home with us. <laughs> so um, I want to start out with a scripture in Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. But before I read from the Bible, Cindy, will you have us a little prayer? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to lift up um, Jesus in our homes and in our hearts. And we pray that the time that we spend here together will be um, invaluable, that it will be insightful and inspirational to all those who listen. So we plead for your Holy Spirit to abide in us and speak through us and use us to help advance your soon coming kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Luke 6:38. Give and it will be given to you. Starts out with the word give. You notice that? Mm -hmm. Give. If you give very clearly, the Bible says it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Isn't that amazing there? Yeah. Uh, that that this, this principle that Jesus is sharing with us, that if you give, if you give. Now, I think, that I, I, think I need to... To, uh, to explain that, let me get some context because this, okay. this really is a valuable teaching in the Bible right here. I read, I read a story uh, about this lady the other day. She had went shopping. She went to the grocery store and went shopping and, uh, and she had all these bags of groceries, you know, in her, in her grocery cart and she'd come walking out to the parking lot and you would not believe there was four guys in her car. You're kidding. No. And, and so she, she, she walks up to them, and, and to their surprise, she drops the, the bags, leave them right there, and pulls out a huge gun out oh, of her purse. No. And she said, she said, get out of the car. She didn't have to tell them twice. Wow. They got out of Dodge. They took off running. Now, you could imagine this shook her up pretty good. Uh, she was oh, probably shaking. Shook she them up too. probably shook them up too. But they got the groceries. And she got the groceries and she put them in her car mm -hmm. uh, really quickly. Quickly, and she 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 got in the car and she started started fumbling around. She's always She's nervous. nervous. She's probably nervous. <laughs> she could not get the key in the ignition. And then all of a sudden, this weird feeling came upon her, and she started looking around, and there it was just a few car parking lot park parking space over was her car. Whoops. She had gotten the wrong car. <laughs> <laughs> I've she, never done anything like that, but I've actually she, went to a car that I thought was fun. <laughs> Cindy, she loaded, she loaded the groceries up in her car, and Cindy, you couldn't wait to get out of there, could she you? She probably peeled out, didn't <laughs> she? didn't get it. <laughs> it wasn't me. It no, wasn't it me. It wasn't her. It wasn't her, but here, here's the point here. She thought it was her car. And, and that's, that's, I think, to understand, to understand this important teaching here in the Bible, this is so important to understand that, that everything that we have belongs to God. Yeah. Really. We, we, think, we think this life is ours. We think that everything we have is ours. No. It, it is, it's a gift from God. Yeah. Um, the truth is God owns everything. Uh, Psalms 89 verse 11, The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world in all its fullness, you have founded them. That's Psalms 89, 11. Psalms 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness. The world and those who dwell therein. Uh, Psalms 50, verse 10 and 11. For every beast of the forest is mine. And the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the mountains. And the wild beasts of the field are mine. Are you getting this picture here? Yeah. What? what uh, read uh, 1 Corinthians 6. 19. Yeah, 6, 19 and 20. Yep. All right. It says, What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. Verse 20 says, For you are bought with a price. Yeah. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So if what the way we read this is that, see, God owns everything, including us. This, 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 we were made by God, and we were made for God. Uh, I think, to me, the important was the realization 
that that God God is about one thing, and that is about saving us into the kingdom for Amen. eternity. And He blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others. Absolutely. He gives us gifts and talents and skills so that we can be a blessing to others, so that we can let the world know that there is a God. Amen. When we really realize that we are ambassadors of God, we, 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 we represent God here on this earth, we allow Him mm-hmm. to use us to prove to others is there really a God. Well, another um, word for ambassadors, we think about being good stewards yes. of what has been entrusted to us. When we take care of the things that we've been given, provided, whether it be our, you know, our, our earth, our, 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 our bodies, anything, then by doing that, it does bring Him honor and glory. Yeah, it does. So, so when we realize that the skills we have, Yes. The health we have, mm-hmm. the talent we have, the, the, the assets we have, the, the, our, our cash, our home, everything we have is a gift from God. And once we realize that, that we are children of God and we're all part of the same family of God and we're here to help other people and convince them that there's a God, then it kind of gives us a new outlook and a new perspective Amen. on life. Amen. And I think, Cindy, I think that's so important right now. Uh, looking at everything going on in 2021, all the craziness, craziness and everything, uh, if there was ever a time that, that people needed hope, that there was more to this life than yeah. the life that we're living, it's now. It really is. I believe what the world is starving for is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, it's one thing, for instance, for, for you to, to tell somebody, oh, I, I know about God and I'm a Christian and I, and I know mm-hmm. about this and I know about that. But they say, well, give me something that I can chew on. Give me something right. to prove. Let me see some fruit right. that, you, that, 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 there's, that you have something that I would be attracted Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Uh, when we go back and we look at the life of Christ, Christ's method uh, that he used, uh, he came to this earth to represent who God really was. And he didn't come out of the gate, you know, with, 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 you know, with all these doctrinal teachings and everything like that. He, what he did is he mingled with people. He yes. mingled with people. Uh, he he, to, to, he, he to, met needs. He met needs of people. He let them know he cared about them. He and then he them. said, "Then he said, follow me. follow me.'" And I think that's more than anything. I think that's what people need right now. I'm, I'm sure that if I was wanting to share something really important about Christ with someone, and yet they had all of these huge needs and they couldn't see beyond the day that they're living in, yeah. and then I just sat there and tried to just push all this. Um, stuff on them about the Bible. I don't know that you know people would want to listen to that. But when we when we genuinely from our heart, because God's put that in us, right. we reach out and we show them love and care yeah. and and all of those things. There's multiple things. It 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 really is important to do that because yes. that's what it's all about. Yeah, you know, absolutely. God God does the rest from from yeah. there. I, I I got what you were saying there because if somebody is hungry. If you take a little kid or, or, or whatever age person and they're just hungry, they hadn't eaten in right. two or three Starving. days, and you go up and tell them, say, oh, I want to tell you about my Jesus. Yeah. Let me tell you what. They're like, they're, I need some food. What they really <laughs> need right now is food. Exactly. Feet, put something in my stomach and then, and, then, and then tell me about your God, and I'll believe you because I know there's something special about Amen. you. You know, Jesus said the same thing. It, yes, it, he did. As I was thinking about, I was thinking about this a while ago. What was what was one of the life sermons that Jesus preached right before Calvary? You know it had to be really important, right? Yeah, absolutely. Go, go to Matthew chapter twenty-five and read verses thirty-one through forty. Now think about okay. this. Here, here Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross, and there's a lot of things he could have told them that say, "Okay, this is the way you're going to tell if you're a Christian, and and if you're really got Jesus living inside of you, this is the way." It would. He, Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things he could have used to describe that. All these sure. doctrinal things. Well, if you know about this, you know about this. Right. If you're Abraham, see. But no. Listen to what Jesus said here. Okay, starting in verse 31. Yeah. Um, it says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he shall set upon the throne of his glory. And therefore, I'm sorry, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd um, divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you mm-hmm. from the foundation of the world. Yep. For I was hungry, 
and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. Mm -hmm. I was a stranger. You took me in. You invited me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when, when saw we three, thee a hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave you drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we the sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? Verse 40 says, And the king shall answer and say to them, Verily, it's pretty important. Yep. I say unto you, in as much as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it wow. unto me. This is so powerful. Amen. See, this is a litmus test to see if you really got Jesus living in you. See, if you got Jesus living in you, there's going to be some kind of fruit. Uh, Jesus is saying here, it's it's not about it, it's not as much as about knowing all this, but right. it's actually just applying Jesus to your life. People Amen. need to see Jesus in us, letting Him be the fabric of our life. That's so right. Others have a tangible way yes. of saying, ah, oh, okay, that's that's yeah. important. So this this is this is so. What would this look like now in 2021? And uh, one of the well, things one ahead. of the things I was thinking about. Is a ministry that you were really involved with mm -hmm. uh, at, at before, before we when, yep, when we were lived in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Why don't yeah. you share a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, I could talk about it for hours, but we don't have hours. We don't have quite that long. <laughs> and uh, but but truthfully, <laughs> there's a variety of ways. I, I, so when I say this, this is not the there's multiple. And I say before I even share uh, about the ministry I was involved in. Many of you know what it is, but uh, be thinking and asking God. What is it that I could do yeah. that would fulfill and fit into the scriptures that we just read? Mm -hmm. And one of those ministries that I'm uh, very passionate about is God's Closet. And it's, it's not what you think it may be. Um, a lot of people thought it was just a thrift store where you come and got, maybe you might find something good after you rummaged around for a little while. Yeah. But um, the, the whole goal of the ministry was really way above and beyond that. It was to supply, um, I think originally, uh, you know, single moms, but really it doesn't have to be single. I mean, there's a lot of people in need. And that was to supply them with clothes, not just yeah. clothes, but clothes really nice clothes in some cases brand new clothes but not always and shoes and things like coats and, and bedding mm -hmm. and stuff like that and so the event was not just a weekly thing where you could come into a thrift store it was an event where four times a year we spent collecting gathering sorting washing and we we only asked for very gently used items Sometimes they could you, be mended, you are. and we, we got new. We had some mm -hmm. wonderful donors that would bring us boxes of stuff. They'd go and just buy stuff. They'd find stuff yes. on clearance, and our, our vats run over. And I know for a fact that um, our good friend Jan um, Harden, who uh, leads out in that ministry in Morganton, I talk to her often, and she says they have so many Close. They've expanded. They've grown. God has really blessed and, the ministry. And, and God has blessed the ministry. And I, I could tell you story after story of churches who were on the fence about, should we do this or should we not do this? Yeah. And, and I'll tell you one instance. One time there was this church and they were like, I just don't know. We want to do it, but we're not sure. Where will we get the clothes? Mm -hmm. And an 18-wheeler full of clothes actually had an accident um, close to this church and they could not... Um, they couldn't keep the clothing and somehow they got word of it and they were able to obtain all of that clothing wow. and they said I think God wants us to start a yes. closet <laughs> yeah. and there are there's a lot of other stories um, like that as well but I want to tell you that to me the highlight of this story yeah yes it fulfilled um, these scriptures in Matthew 25 it definitely did that without a doubt but um, the very first time that we had our event I don't remember the exact numbers, but there were well over 300 people that came through that day to get free clothing. But th while that was a wonderful thing and we were able to meet needs and, and develop good relations in our community, I saw, sorry, this wind, um, I saw the church body, the, the, the family, the church family get on fire for God. Mm -hmm. I mean, at one time we had 80 to 100 
volunteers. They might not all be there on the same day. They, they might could do cleanup. They might could do setup. They might could do event day. But, you know, almost almost all of the church was involved yes. in some yeah. facet of that ministry. Yeah. And, and, and I, I know they're still uh, very active. It's been going on for several years now, and it's been going on for even longer than yeah. that in many churches. Um, yeah. God really blessed the ministry. Yeah. Uh, as a pastor, just an uh, overview, looking, looking on it, what I've seen, first of all, a need was met. One of the greatest needs that we have right now is, 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 is families trying to raise children, especially single moms, yeah. and, and to keep up. If they got, if they got more than one kid, it's, it's expensive, expensive to put clothes on a, ch- on a child uh, because they, you know, they're going to school and everything and like that. So and they grow so fast, they grow so fast. They grow in and grow out of them. So it was a huge need being met. But, not only, but what I, as a pastor, seeing 80 to 100 people getting involved in the ministry, and it just the, the attitude, uh, yes. the, the smiles, uh, the the uh, the teamwork. It was just wonderful. It was it, joyful. It, was it, it wasn't like yeah. it's, oh, we have to do yeah. God. It was just so. Here, here's great. the here's here's the story. If you want if you want to be blessed, be a blessing to others. Amen. It, it, and, and don't hold back. Just God will God will use you in a way if you're willing to be used. It just to go out there and just right. look for ways that you can help other people and, and, and it's be a blessing to you. Amen. I remember my own story personally is that when someone come up to me and asked me if I'd like to study the Bible, mm-hmm. you know, really, just somebody just like you. And I've, sh- I've shared that many times because I, it's so important that it, it wasn't a pastor. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't show up to church one day. Somebody came to me. They sacrificed yes. their own time. And I remember, th- that's the reason I'm bringing this up, it just would blow my mind that, 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 that this guy and, th- and then these other couple guys would take their time mm-hmm out of their busy schedule and these guys were like professionals they were uh they one of them was the doctor and these other did anesthesia at the hospital and they would take a whole night coming down once a week and sharing jesus with me Amen. that just totally shocked me that somebody would be so unselfish with their life for me and that, of course i understand now why, why they did it but they that not only did i receive a blessing but they received a huge blessing That's for true. being a, a part of that so now I got one other thing that's so very important here. If if you want to be blessed with your life, not only give your time, but mm-hmm. also give everything. Give your money if you're willing to give your money. Uh, you know, you here here's something I, I want to say. You can't outgive God. You just can't do it. You can't do it. Uh, he have, we have a text in the Bible, Malachi chapter three, verse ten it says, "Bring all the tithes." Now this is a message from God to you. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this. Now, this is the only place, Cindy, that I know of in the whole Bible that God says, try me on. Mm. But he makes it very clear here. So this is a challenge, really, from God to you. He said, try me on this right here. Says the Lord of hosts, if it would not, if I would not open up for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there would not be room enough to receive it. I like oh, that wow. idea. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Well, Sandy, I remember hmm. uh, when when um, you came up to me yep. and you asked me to start tithing off our farm. Yeah. And what did I say? It didn't go very well. He said, nope. I said, no way. <laughs> not not, not that said, money. You can give I, your money, but said, not giving this money. give your money, money. honey, but not you, mine. You were kind every now and then. You would give me like a $100 bill to throw yeah. in the yeah. offering plate. I thought that was pretty nice. <laughs> But, but that was B.C., friends. That's before I knew Jesus. i tell you what happened. We had uh, about the time that we started studying the Bible together. Yes. Uh, we we uh, had a disease on our farm. And that farm, we were losing up to a 1,000 birds a day. Yeah. Now, each one of those birds, it wasn't fun. Each one of those birds had 4,000 pounds of feed. Uh, uh, no, had uh, four to eight, uh, four, yeah, four, each one of those birds had uh, eight pounds of feed in them. Yes. Eight pounds. Eight pounds of feed. Now think about that. It's a lot eight of feed. Eight pounds of feed times 1,000 is 8,000 pounds of feed. Wow. Think about that. It was killing us financially. It was really destroying us. And I remember when, when, when I realized that there really was a God that cared about me and loved me, and, and we started we started giving. I started yes. giving 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 offerings it, and, it and, and tithes off the It seemed crazy at the time. It was yep. like... 
I mean, I wanted that, but yep. then when I actually saw it happen, I was like, oh. <laughs> it was amazing. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what happened. We had, uh, yeah, I had that disease, and what we were trying to do is try to find some type of chemical or some type of something that would fight that disease. And I remember uh, driving a four-hour trip uh, uh, pulling a truck and trailer, and we were going to get 6,000 pounds of litter treatment and put on the, put on the, the floor uh, to, keep, to basically lower the pH so that, have that this disease would have a hard time living. And uh, I remember on the way there, my dad and I were traveling, and I seen a church billboard sign mm -hmm. that said, it's time to stop worrying and start praying. It's pretty good yeah, advice. Yeah, that's, yeah. And I <laughs> Easier knew, said than done. I but. knew that that was a message from God. I mean, God was just knocking at my heart's door. And, and, and we, we, so much that I was, give, I was starting to give money, you know, offerings and, and, uh, to, to, the, to the church. And uh, when we got there to the place where we were going to, my dad went on, on the inside, and, and I was outside getting the truck and trailer loaded, and my dad was visiting mm -hmm. with this elderly guy that was uh, was part mm -hmm. of the administrative team there at where he was at, where at this place we're at, and he was telling about the disease, and and the guy says, "I tell you how to get rid of that disease." Mm -hmm. That day, he told us how to get rid of that disease, right. and and I want you to know, this is how good talking about open up the windows of heaven. Each time we had that disease, we probably made ten thousand dollars less than what we'd had if we'd not had. It was the a disease. game changer. And 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 uh, I, I was I was telling our church about it this morning. I said it is ten thousand dollars ten thousand dollars more. A grow out. That's the part I didn't share. That's the part yeah, you didn't that, share. Yeah, and we had <laughs> seven grow outs a year. So I'm talking. It was a huge financial blessing. Uh, uh, from God, uh, as He, but He, he we, did that, and we he, gave God all the glory. Oh for yes, it. we did, and and still Amen. do. But I'm telling you what, friends, you cannot outgive God. It's not, it's yeah. not possible. Yeah. He doesn't need our money. No, He doesn't. It's yeah. it, there's a bigger picture there. You know what He needs? He needs our heart. He needs our heart. That's he needs what we heart. can. That's he what we needs can give our him. heart to save us. Amen. So yeah, that that's. That's really the take home. God wants to save everybody. He needs yeah. our heart, and He uses us to win other people to Him. Yeah, and so. and the part that we are unable to portray to you, even this morning at church, uh, we won't be able to to give the details. But there was a video that was played, and it talked about a young man that had. I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version, but he basically. Um, well, he just had some hard knocks in life. He was even and talking about suicide. He, suicidal, and he got really down and out. And um, the the sh the long and short of it is that he he decided to start uh, helping others. Now that seems kind of crazy, you know, help others. And as he helped a little bit, you know what happened next? He helped a little bit more. He kept opportunities just started falling in his lap. It mm -hmm. changed him radically that's right and and it'll change you radically too yeah. when you give when you don't just focus inward on everything that you have what whatever whatever it is whether it's money your health um anything it doesn't matter if you will turn that focus turn your eyes on jesus first and then you will reach out god will provide somebody for you to help and he will he will just he'll birth in you such a, a hunger and a desire to want to to help others. Yeah. The best way to work out your own salvation That's and, and your own thinking. good of your life yeah. is by aggressively seeking the salvation and good of others. If you've got mm -hmm. something going on in your life that's stealing your joy, that's got you knocked down and beat up, the very best medicine, the Bible says, is go out and try to help somebody else that's right. in worse shape than you are. But don't take our word for it. It's do something it. you've got to, you just got to step yeah. out and do it yeah. for yourself. So let me wrap this up. Friends, you can't out give God. You can't do it. Amen. You know how? You know how? You know why? Mm -hmm. Let me share a story. This little uh, little guy named Sammy. Oh, Sammy. Yeah, Sammy. <laughs> Sammy. Sammy loved to go to the country store with his dad. He just loved going with him there, and he would because he knew that every time when they put, walked up to the checkout counter, that that nice gentleman on the other side of the counter is going to say, "Sammy, reach your hand over there in that in that jar and get you a handful of candy mm. before you leave." <laughs> and and uh, mm. Sammy just loved that. Loved going there and everything. But Sammy was so he was so shy. And every time, every time that gentleman would say that, Sammy, he was so shy, he would just back away. And he said, no, Dad, you do it. And you, you get it, get it for me. And so one day, I mean, this rocked on for a long time. And one day on the way home, Sammy's dad said, Sammy, why are you so shy? 
Now, why are you so shy to reach in that jar? About that time, a big grin come over <laughs> Sammy's face. He said, Dad, he said, because your hands are a lot bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> He friends, was pretty smart after all. Friends, huh? you can't outgive God mm. because His hands are so much bigger. He wants to Amen. bless you, and He wants you to use you to be a blessing to others. That's right. I want to challenge you. Cindy and I like to challenge you to do something. Why don't you have a little talk with Jesus? Talk to Him about this. Give Him permission uh, to use you, to, to use you, to Amen. throw you out in the harvest, to, to be that helping hand to somebody, to be, to be that gentle smile, maybe that telephone call, uh, maybe some words of encouragement. Or maybe, maybe he's asking you maybe to give to a particular ministry or fund or something like that. You know, people all the time do this in drive throughs They pay it forward. Yes. You know, they pay for the person behind them. And it, it's happened. Some people have done it for me. And I asked the lady one time, I said, someone, did you know? I mean, I don't know that person. She says, no, it happens at least once a day in this drive through Somebody yeah. is paying it forward. And yeah. I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. So do you want blessed? Be a blessing to others. Let Amen. me pray for you. Father in heaven, you are a good God, and Lord, the way you work, um, would you please, everyone that's watching right now, that's going to watch maybe later on in the week, would you please bless them? Would you open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon them, Lord, as they give their life to help others, as they give back to you? I pray for your blessing upon them. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. God bless you, friends. Amen. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.